Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joe. I have previously reviewed the MXS 5.0 and the MXS 25 chargers on my channel. And recently I had a chance to check out the SeaTech MXS 0.8, which is suitable for smaller batteries, for example. And, but then it got me thinking, this might actually be the charger to get out of all the different options out there. For one, it's affordable. Uh, costing around 30 to 40 pounds. Is it cheap and cheerful or does it have any drawbacks from the puny 0.8 amps of power delivery? Let's take a look. Specs wise, it delivers a maximum of 0.8 amps and a max voltage of 14.4 volts, which is suitable for all lead acid type batteries, including AGM ones, like the one fitted in my M3. It doesn't have any buttons or any fancy reconditioning modes. On that account, it's super easy to use and it's just plug and play. It does have an error lamp to indicate if you plug it in the wrong way round, which also acts like a fault indicator for the battery. For example, if the battery can't be charged or hold a charge, which it will check at the fourth stage to see if the voltage will drop below 12 volts, it will light up the error LED, plus it has reverse polarity protection as well. Last but not least, it's also IP65 rated, so you don't have to worry about leaving it outside as it's protected from dust and rain. Like I mentioned, this charger is probably suited for smaller batteries, usually fitted to motorbikes. I tested it with this UASA UASA, UASA battery, which is rated at 6 amp hour in capacity. It was completely flat at 8.7, 8.8 volts. In theory, it should take around seven and a half hours to charge. At the end, it took eight hours and 45 minutes, but bear in mind, this battery was deeply discharged and other factors like temperature and the efficiency of the charger will affect the overall charging time. Next, I tried to charge my M3 as I was interested to see how long it would take to charge a 70 amp hour AGM battery. I had a battery warning on my iDrive and I checked the voltage with a multimeter, which was just under 12 volts. FYI, this battery is over nine years old and oh boy, did it take some time to charge. I set up a time-lapse monitor to, to monitor the whole process as it took a whopping 54 hours to fully charge the M3. That's over two full days and a little bit more. You might be wondering why I said at the beginning of the video that I think this might be the best charger to buy compared to other more powerful or expensive options. Uh, we've established it can charge a motorcycle battery within nine hours, which is reasonable. Just slap it on and leave it overnight so that's easy enough. Here's the thing, even though it took a super long time to charge the M3, once it's charged it will trickle charge or float charge at the same 13.6 volts. This is the same for the MX25 or the 5.0 model. The only difference is how long it will take to reach that point. So who's this charger for? Well, I think uh, obviously for people who are only going to use it on bikes, you don't need and I wouldn't recommend using anything with more power anyway, as you will likely overload the battery by pumping in too much current. On the larger chargers, you have a dedicated bike mode, which limits to the 0.8 amps anyway. And on the MXS25, for example, there's no option for this at all. And for car users, I reckon this is perfect for your weekend or second or project cars where you don't need to use the car on a daily basis. Why? Evidently, the charging time is slow. If you have a particular large battery, it would struggle to charge it halfway, even after 24 hours. Although you could leave it over the weekend, I suppose. But like I said, once it's charged, you don't need all that power anyway from the more expensive chargers. Therefore, this sub 40 pound charger is the most cost effective way to charge and maintain your battery without much hassle. Not to mention, it's probably recommended by most experts that it's better for the long term health of the battery to charge at a slower pace anyway. More power, more current, more heat equals more damage to the battery. 
And finally, just to say that this video is not sponsored by CTEC. I've used their products for many years and they've been working without fault all this time from my own personal experience. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.